in captioning these videos I've been making, I realized that I use the word so very, very much as a filler word. Thus, I have come up with uh, a list of replacement words that I will use instead of the word so. Therefore, let's see how this works. We're going to be talking about instantaneous centers of zero velocity, uh, and I'm going to do things a little different by doing the exact same problem I did in the previous video to show how we can use uh, different methods to approach the same thing. Now, if you remember the previous video, this is all of the work that we had to do to figure out how fast this slider was moving, and uh, as a consequence, we found out how much that was rotating. The instantaneous center, or IC, as we will usually call it, uh, refers to the fact that for an object that is undergoing general planar motion, that is going to be this link BC here, there is always going to be a point where we can find the object undergoing a pure rotation. Thus, well now I'm just going to use the word thus a lot, um, the example that is used most frequently for looking at uh, the instantaneous center is when we have a wheel that is rolling without slipping. Uh, the point that makes contact with the ground is always going to be instantaneously at rest, and the center of mass is going to move with some velocity, and the wheel is rotating with some velocity, but at this moment, this point has a velocity of zero. And this is the basic idea of having an instantaneous center. Even though the wheel itself, we usually think of as rotating about its center, uh, we can also view its rotation at some given instant as being about some other point. That is what we're going to do with this problem, and as we're going to see, that's going to make the math a little bit easier. Ergo, continuing onward, we have the velocity of this point here that we want to try to find. Uh, we have this link BC that has a, we'll call that radius R C slash B. We have the 300 millimeters that is equal to R B slash A. Again, we had this omega BC that was representing the rotation of link BC about point B. And then we have this fixed point A and omega AB that is equal to 60 radians per second. Now for link AB, we don't have to worry about an instantaneous center because it is in fact rigidly rotating about that point. Meaning for link AB, point A already is an instantaneous center. The idea now is that we want to find an appropriate point for this link BC. So our procedure to find the IC, the instantaneous center, is going to be as follows. We have these two different points on the link BC, and each of them are going to be moving with some velocity at this instant. We already have the velocity VC, that is the speed that we're trying to find. In the previous problem, we also were able to compute the speed of point B, although we didn't have to bother much dealing with it because we were using uh, angular velocity vectors. But if we were to draw that in, our velocity vector VB is going to act perpendicular to this link BC because it is just undergoing circular motion. So what we want to try to find, though, is what point can we view the problem such that uh, VB and VC are both undergoing a rotation? So the first step is we write down these two vectors. The second step is to find the instantaneous center. We're going to take a line perpendicular from our velocity vectors. So the first is our velocity vector VC, which is pointing straight downward. So perpendicular to that would be this horizontal line that is just passing through this point C. Again, the instantaneous center, it's undergoing a pure rotation. That means that this length is going to represent a radial vector, and then this is going to be perpendicular to that, just as we had for this pure rotation of A about B. That makes writing the one for A, B really easy, because it is in fact purely rotating about B. Uh, this is already perpendicular to this line, so drawing a vector uh, drawing the line perpendicular to AB is just drawing the line along AB and coming out this way. So 
we started with our two velocity vectors. We extended these lines. This point out here then represents our instantaneous center of zero velocity for this problem. So we have, I just did it without even knowing. Consequently, we can use the fact that at around this instantaneous center, link BC is undergoing a pure rotation. What that means is that we have this omega BC, that's representing the angular velocity of this entire link. And for a velocity uh, representing a pure rotation, this is just equal to omega multiplied by an R. The omega here is gonna be omega BC. The R is gonna be this distance between the instantaneous center and C. So I'm gonna call that R sub C slash IC c slash ic. That's unknown, but it's a distance that we'll be able to measure using the geometry. Similarly, point b is also undergoing a pure rotation about that point. In other words, vb is equal to omega bc multiplied by this distance between b and our instantaneous center, r b i c. So this entire distance here is r b i c. Now, from our previous problem, uh, since link AB is undergoing a pure rotation, uh, we can previously say that VB is also equal to omega AB multiplied by RB slash A. That was this 300 millimeter distance. Notice this is a scalar equation because this is just the same type of expression we were using before. So we have 60 radians per second multiplied by r b slash a. I'm going to write that as 0.3 meters. That's going to give us 18 meters per second. So we in fact know that vb is already equal to 18 meters per second. Uh, we're trying to find vbc and we're trying to find vc. The only thing we need now are these two distances. So we're going to go up to this big triangle. I did it again. As a result, we're going to look at this triangle. We're given these angles as a part of that problem. Phi was equal to 45 degrees. This angle theta was 60 degrees. So if we look at this triangle, this angle is gonna be 45 degrees. This angle is going to be 30 degrees. Uh, and then the entire angle between um, the IC, B, and C is gonna be 105 degrees. So if we give a quick sketch of that new triangle, we have 0.6 meters here. We have this being 45 degrees. We have this being R B slash I C. This is R C slash I C. This is 105 degrees and this is 30 degrees. So now we're going to bust out the law of sines that says the sine of 30 divided by 0.6 is equal to sine 45 divided by R B I C is equal to the sine of 105 divided by R C slash I C. So we're just using this, uh, we're just using this geometry to figure these out. I think my previous use of the word so was justified. Moreover, we can then solve for these two quantities. We get R B slash I C is equal to 0 0.849 meters we get that our C slash IC is equal to 1.159 meters. Consequently, as I reach a conclusion, the RBIC, we will plug in up there. The RCIC, we will plug in up here. This gives us that omega BC is equal to VB divided by RB slash IC. That gives us 21.2 radians per second. Then plugging that back into our expression up here, this gives us that VC is equal to 24.6 meters per second. So we did the exact same problem as we did yesterday, and we got the exact same answers we did yesterday. Uh, so that's good. Notice for this problem, we did a lot less math. We really didn't have to worry about vector components, and that was kind of nice. Therefore, consequently, because ergo it follows that, henceforth accordingly, 
We will use this instantaneous center method quite frequently moving forward because it's a faster way of determining velocities. Notice that it is useful for determining velocities. We will still have to go back and use the full vector version once we start getting into accelerations. Therefore, uh, this video is ended. I hope you enjoy. This is supposed to be an orange Yoda on top of my hat. My son made it, so I hope you enjoy that. Goodbye.